Um, I did not start my recording. <laughs> All right. Hello, YouTube version of Girl Nancy. I am back again with another video. This video, we are going to talk about documentation. Now, if you don't know, I already created a documentation video, but I am going to link that down below as well. And the only reason why I felt the need to make another documentation video is because it's one of the questions that I get asked about a lot and so I said you know what maybe I do need to revisit that you know because I have learned some things too and so I am also going to make this video <clears throat> something like a workshop meaning I'm going to be inserting a lot of things in this video as much as I can when I go back to edit so you guys can have a visual of what I'm saying so it's not just me talking. I know you guys don't want to hear me talking. You want you want the meat, okay? Give, give us the meat. So I'm going to do just that. The first thing I want you guys to remember is that when you are doing your documentations, make sure you talk about what you did with your patient or what the patient did how did they do it okay and then what did you do as a clinician okay and that's pretty much it okay what did they do how did they do it and what did you do as a clinician that's pretty much the basics of <laughs> documentation like that's like documentation 101 like if you do that you're good so sometimes I'll read a note I'll just give you guys an example I read a note and I'm probably gonna put that in this video as well just so you, just so you guys can have a visual of what it looks like and I have someone write something like patient engaged in sin and balance and transfers while working on tolerance activity tolerance session was great what is wrong with this what i just said yes i know i kind of know what the patient did but you didn't tell me how how they did and you didn't tell me what you did as a clinician so that's not a good note at all you have to write something like patient engage in sit and balance activity okay um, patient needed moderate assistance to maintain upright posture while sitting on the edge of the bed. Um, patient, stay, patient sat on the edge of the bed for five minutes with moderate assistance. Um, therapist provided tactile cues or patient or therapist provided verbal instructions to prevent falls or to maximize time spent on the edge of the bed or to increase safety or to prevent lateral leaning or retrograde posture um i need to be able to visualize what the patient was doing how they did how much assistance did they need did they need physical assistance or do they need verbal cues or verbal instructions do they need i don't know like what did they need in order to do what they were doing and what did you do as a clinician okay because if you tell me what the patient did how they did but you didn't tell me why i was there as a clinician why i was needed that's not a skilled note you have to write a skilled note so that if insurance is reading that note they will see that your work your job as an occupational therapist as a coder is needed because it's needed because you are providing x y and z support or x y and z help or instructions or demo or you know whatever it is that you did as a therapist i need to see that in there so that is the basics of writing notes honestly that's pretty much it um if you want to break it down and do more of a soap note like subjective objective assessment and i think planning i hope that i got that right um you can definitely do that and break it down that way but i personally don't write my notes like that as long as i have what the patient did how they did what i did that's it and then you can add into that note anything that you want us to know for example if patient was complaining about pain that's something that you need to put in there and what you did about it um maybe you notify the nurse about the pain or you notify the nurse because their blood pressure was too high right that's something that i want to know that's something that did happen during the session so that's something that you should put in there um if patient was you know whatever whatever that happened in the session put that in there if patient was um 
complain about being dizzy or maybe they lost their balance or they, you know, whatever. Patient wanted to sit, patient told you that they don't want to do therapy anymore because I don't know, they don't want to sit in a wheelchair. I, I don't know. Whatever it is that happened, you need to put it in there. So that can be your subjective part of the soap note. Um, and then the planning. I personally like to put planning the P part of the soap note in there only because I'm OCD, okay? But you don't have to put that in there. So some people do it, some people don't. I personally like to do it, but not for every patient, for certain patients. If I feel like it's needed. So for example, if I'm doing a progress note, a research, an evaluation on the patient, and there's something specifically that I want the next person treating them to do, I will put that in the note. So I can put like... Make sure you work on standing balance with patient while in the shower. Or make sure you discuss discharge plans with the patient at the next section so we can get the patient ready for discharge home in two weeks. So whatever it is that I want someone to take a note of or to know or to notice or to do for the next session, I'll put that in there. Or even for myself, maybe I'll see the patient in the next session and I may forget something that we talked about that session that was important. So I'll put it in there so I can remember. So that when I do see the patient, I can go back to the note and I can look at it and be like, oh, okay, we were supposed to, last time we worked on um, arm exercises for, I don't know, 20 minutes with five pound weight. So today we have to try at least 30 minutes with eight pound weight. I don't know, right? So it's also good for you to put certain things in there so you can keep track of how the patient is doing and how much you want to upgrade or downgrade depending on how they did. So that's pretty much the basis of writing the note. Like I said, I'm going to put that in here in the video so you guys can have a visual. Another thing that you want to do when you write a note too is you want to write it in a way, like I already mentioned, to show that you are doing skilled therapy, right? They are paying us because we are skilled therapists. We are clinicians, okay? That's why they're paying us. They don't want to pay us to just sit in the chair while the patient is just doing exercise and I'm just looking at them do it. If a patient is able to do their exercise independently, I don't need to be doing exercise with them anymore as a treatment session, okay? I can give them, I can print out the exercise program for them, I can give it to them and they can do that on their own independently when they don't have therapy. I don't need to sit there and do exercises with them unless that patient needs Verbal instructions. I need to be there. I need to be there so I can tell them how to do it. I need to be there so I can give them demo on how to do it. Or I need to be there so I can give them physical assistance to actually do the exercises. If I am at the session with the patient, and I'm not actually doing anything physically with the patient, whether I'm talking and giving verbal instructions, or I'm showing them how to do it, or I'm providing some kind of cues, then I it's not skilled, right? If anybody else can do what I'm doing, then it's not skilled. Meaning, if a CNA can sit there and watch, or a nurse can sit there and watch a patient do exercises, is it skilled? No, it's not. It makes it skilled based on what I'm provided <laughs> as a clinician, if that makes sense. So some of the wording, and I'm going to put some of this in the video as well, and I may, I'll see if I can leave some down below as well um, but certain words that I love to use personally I like to put um, I like to put words like developed downgraded educated is one of my favorite one instructed is one of my favorite one to put um, positioned I love position progressed is another good word to use graded is another good one um, collaborated with patient collaborated with caregivers about something um, caregiver instruction if you did that is another good one adaptation it's a good one to use um, analyzed uh, what's the other good ones that I use customize um, you know, so any any of these words to show skill is what you want to do. Okay, recommended is another good one. Promoted, I love that one. Promoted is another good one. Um, you know, posture alignment. Uh, you know, what's another good one that I like to lose? Simulated. Simulated is another good one that I use that all the time. Safety, like. All of those implemented, another good one that I love, increased. <laughs> it's another good one. So make sure that you are using skilled words and also not only just using the words, but actually providing skilled therapy. 
stick to the basics it doesn't have to be long your notes never have to be long i used to have a coda that literally she her notes were so simple and i loved it because when i go in i look at i look at the notes i know exactly what the patient did how they did how much assistance that they needed and what she did and it was just perfect and she would do it like line by line she didn't even write it like in sentences like she would put patient engage low body dressing max assistance needed Therapist provided max assist, or therapist provided max assist, or therapist provided verbal cues so patient can engage in hygiene and sync with menaces. That's it. <laughs> Literally, and I was like, thank you for keeping it so simple because that's, I need the meat, right? I don't need all the extra words, like certain notes. I literally have to read it like third time because I'm like, what did you do? what what was going on? Like, too much is happening. Too much is going on in this note. So always keep it simple because it make my job very easy as a as a ot to look at the coders notes and just go ahead and, and do if i'm doing a research or progress or whatever and, and really know exactly what happened and it makes my job easier when you know if let's say if i have i'm going on vacation and i have somebody else coming in to work for me they're reading my notes and they have no idea what happened right so always make sure that if somebody else is reading your notes they will understand exactly what you did how how they did it and all of that stuff so that's it that's the end of the video i hope it was helpful if it was go ahead and give it a thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye guys